Uh, he said he almost said the 49ers, but that'd have been fine because I want to be a frustrated football player to tell you the truth. But uh, guys, another lovely afternoon. I'm gonna take my sunglasses off here, but I might not be able to see everybody. Uh, you're supposed to take your sunglasses off to be more personal. Uh, like I tell my guys, that sometimes you gotta take your sunglasses off. The only thing is, my sunglasses are um, prescription, so I really can't see. Let me see how bright it is without my glasses on here. <laughs> Well, I might have to put them back on because I tell you, I didn't sleep much last night. <laughs> tell you the truth, I haven't slept in about a week now. It was a, it was a long, tough road trip. Um, second time across the country, I'm sure everybody here who travels uh, knows about short nights and long trips and time changes. But things are going pretty good for us right now. Um, you know, we're in first place. We're, we're staying ahead of the Diamondbacks and staying ahead of the Dodgers. We feel it's going to be a great year. Um, it's going to be a very competitive year, but we knew that going in, especially our division, I think, is, uh, is the toughest division in, in baseball because we have four quality teams, and who knows uh, exactly what Colorado is going to do because they can always you know, have a big offensive night against you. So uh, it's going to be very, very tough, but you know, our guys, they play hard. They play hard every day. Uh, it's, uh, it's getting tougher and tougher. I talked to Joe Torre uh, about, well, last winter, actually, because I had a, a, a slight medical problem last year where, you know, I, I had come down with prostate cancer. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer uh, exactly almost five months ago. So I'm talking to Joe about different things, about changing my diet and about, you know, serving my energy, uh, directing all my energies in a, in a certain and a positive direction. And I asked Joe, I said, uh, you know, you've been in this job twice as long as I've been in it. And Joe was one of the guys who really took care of me when I was uh, a rookie with the Braves. And as a matter of fact, I know there's ladies in here, but uh, <laughs> Joe is the one who, who turned me on to the first lady I went out with when I was 19 years old in Big Lake. And uh, actually, uh, my mom didn't like it. She's Playboy Bunny. <laughs> She was like 28, I was at 19, so that was like perfect for me. So I called Joe once again. I said, hey, Joe, uh, I said, I need your help on a few things. And he helped me, like I said, with my physical problem. Uh, and so I, I said, Joe, you know, how do you keep your guys motivated year in and year out to stay on top and to, uh, and, and to aspire to be the world champions? <laughs> and, uh, and he told me it's getting harder. He says it's getting harder over a period of time. Uh, because it seems like, you know, money motivates, it's always motivated the world, but it's motivating the young more than, you know, than ever. And he says what you have to do is that you have to find a way, you know, to get to people as far as their pride is concerned and, and about reverting back to amateur status when you were just playing a game for the love of the game and for the love of competition and beating the opposition. And this is what I think what it's, you know, what it's all about. And also at the same time, you want to get to a point where, where everybody wants to come play for you or play for your organization, in his case the Yankees, in my case the Giants. But at the same time, um, you don't want everybody on your team. Uh, you, even though a guy's a good player, you're looking for players that can play as well as guys with good character, that especially veterans that will lead your young players in a, in a positive direction. Because you got some players that are great players, but they will lead your players uh, to hell, so to speak. It's like, hey, come go with me, but they'll take them down the wrong road. And so you have to try to uh, uh, not have those kind of guys on your team. And at the same time, uh, if you do make a mistake on a player, which George Steinbrenner and the Yankees are very good at because they have a lot of money where they can cover up their mistakes, <laughs> where, uh, you know, uh, mistakes still stink, but they're, if they've got some money on top of it, they don't stink quite as much. If you <laughs> And so he said, if you do make a mistake, that you try to alleviate that mistake as soon as possible versus trying to uh, correct that mistake while that mistake is with you. And uh, I, I'm reading John Wooden's book now, and that's exactly what he says, that, you know, you have to realize that you're going to make mistakes, and then when you make mistakes, then you have to alleviate and get rid of that mistake or else it's going to go through your organization or your team like a cancer. And it only takes one or two bad apples to to spoil a situation. It's getting tougher and tougher to do that uh, just simply because, 
you know, everything's about a budget. But uh, the one thing I learned when I was in L.A. was, was the fact, I know it's a bad word here, but I learned quite a bit of good things while I was on the Dodgers. And, and the one thing I learned was, uh, uh, you know, fundamental play. And, uh, and uh, I remember Al Campanis gave me this book, uh, The Dodger Way to Play Baseball. I thought it was the stupidest book in the world when I first got it until one night I missed the cutoff man. And uh, I missed the cutoff man, and uh, I think Davey Lopes was the captain. He came over to me, and he says, hey, man, we don't play ball like that here. And I said, hey, man, get out of my face. You don't tell me what to do. And the next thing I know, here's uh, Joe Ferguson. He's in my face. And then here's uh, Steve Garvey, Ron Zay. I'm outnumbered about 15 to 1. <laughs> so I kind of, like, backed off. Okay, man, it's cool. You know, <laughs> And then I went home that night and I read that book. And when you get home by yourself and you realize that, you know, I was wrong. Uh, uh, but I didn't admit it right then that I was wrong because I thought I knew how to play coming from the Braves. But 